Good morning, Pauly's Island peeps. Today is Thirsty for Obedience Thursday, November 12th, 2020. And it is time for your Pauly's Island sunrise and surf report with Dave Clayton and today's special guest, Richard Morris. Ricardo, good, good morning. morning. Good morning. How's everybody? So when I was thinking about obedience and the desire for obedience, I could think of no one better than Richard Morris. I've gotten to know him real well through working out at Health Point. You're an exercise physiologist there, correct? I am an exercise physiologist, yes. So what does that mean? What do you do there, Richard? Everybody, welcome Richard um, with us to the morning. We're here in the in underneath a dock here with the, with the top because we thought it was going to be pouring down rain. 97% chance, Dave. <laughs> it said 100 last night, Richard. Well, you know, there's always an opportunity. Yes. We have a window. We do. So we're going to move this here. We're going to move this. I was going to put it there, but let's do this. I thought you were going to bring in a crew. Man, kind of... <laughs> You know, I don't, we have, have, I don't have an autograph session or anything. <laughs> Let's turn this around and show everybody how beautiful we are. We're out here on the creek in Pauly's. <laughs> here we go. All right. All right. Let's fix this microphone so you can hear. So people are saying good morning to you. Good morning. All right. I thought you were going to have, like, powder guys out fixing my face and stuff. <laughs> so, Richard, one of my favorite things you do is you teach chair yoga. I do. At Health Point. And that's how I really got to know you better. Holly says, yay, no wind noise. No wind noise, good. Yes. Polly's Island peeps are so easily satisfied because they're used to such terrible broadcasting. <laughs> so even something as simple as having no wind noise just delights them. I love that. So I'm going to turn this around and we're going to face you. And I think I'm going to actually turn this so it'll hear both of us. So that's front, that's middle. Okay, so this should be able to hear both of us. All right, Richard. So tell us a little bit about chair yoga and what that does and how that, you know, just what you're doing there, because I just love that class. Yeah. So um, I started teaching yoga probably over two years ago. Um, I got my certification. I felt there was a need for yoga. Um, I do a lot of golf conditioning. Um, you know, as we get older, obviously we need flexibility. And um, I took a chair yoga class and uh, with one of my cardiac patients, and I thought it was just gonna be really easy. And then come to find out, it's a lot more difficult than I thought. So what I do is I combine a little chair yoga with some standing exercises, um, and then we take it to the floor to add some more stretches, uh, doing core work and glute work and all that good stuff. But um, I teach about three classes per week and um, I'm noticing as I get older, my body can really only take about three classes per week. So. Can you demonstrate a little bit with this chair oh, you're on, please? On, Dave. I'd like you to please show us, because it really helped me tremendously. So, and this really helps with older people too, right? Yeah, um, the majority of my people are older, including me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sometimes when people come to my class, so we may start a class, so let's pretend I'm in a chair. Um, and, uh, you know, you start with the, you know, the deep breath. Inhale, exhale down. I don't have my yoga pants, so I'm not <laughs> Inhale, exhale down. And you may start with, you know, some shoulder strokes. You carry tension in the shoulders, uh, rolling your shoulders back and rolling your shoulders forward. Um, we could do a shoulder stretch across. I'm playing golf today, so this is great. Where are you playing? I'm playing down at Debbie Dew. I think we have a window. As you told me, it was 100% chance of <laughs> rain, and I told you it was 97%, <laughs> so you never know. It looks like we're going to have a sunrise. I know. Uh, so when we're seated in the chair, I do a lot of the 
you know, the shoulder warm up, the breathing. Um, we take a lot of tension in our neck, so you could do some rolling of the neck. Don't try this at home. Just kidding. <laughs> Now that I got my plant base going, my water going, all this energy going this morning, um, you know, and then I could take it into some hip exercises uh, where you would stretch out your lower back from the chair. I did rehearse for this, I promise. These were not the <laughs> questions given. <laughs> Ricardo! And then you could stretch out your IT band. I need that. Yes, Dave's having some hip issues trying to run a marathon without a trainer. <laughs> and then you could go into, if I was in a chair, I could go into a warrior one. Hands down, open up into a warrior two. And you can do that all from a chair. And then I would stand up and do some other poses. But uh, yeah, it's a great way to work on your breathing. Uh, you can also find out muscle imbalances, you know, if you're having a hip issue like you're having. You know, it could be possibly the other side of your body. You might have a weak core. You could have weak abductors, adductors, all that good stuff. So, enough of my physiology talk yes. for this morning. So you're talking about your physical. Yep. Tell us about your, you were mentioning to me that you had three things that you really have been trying to focus on. And I, I really, I guess we should start with your story. Yeah. Um, so I've been in recovery for about 2.85 days today. Um, who's counting? Uh, I could name the hours if I looked at my app, but... Uh, Not days. I could look at my days. Two years. 2.8 years. Yeah, you said days. I could look at my app oh. and find out my days and hours. Oh, so, I see. Sorry. It's one day at a time. That's okay. Um... So, two, about 2.8 years ago, um, I was struggling with addiction, uh, and uh, I finally said I need help, and um, it happened December 23rd, um, and I found a place to go for recovery, and you know, being a physiologist, I noticed my body, we talked about the physically, mentally, and spiritual part of recovery, and physically, my body was breaking down, um, and I noticed you know, a racing heart rate. A lot of mine was anxiety. I was on anxiety, an anxiety med. Um, and when you mix that with, with alcohol, it doesn't work out too well. Um, so when I, when I look back, uh, you know, I didn't really choose that date. That date kind of chose me. Um, I did have a place that I had set up that I was going on December 24th, and I decided to go on December 23rd. And when, when I left, um, you know, my body, heart rate was racing, full of anxiety, and um, I was off to Statesboro, Georgia, which was about a three-hour ride. So what led to that? What, what made you realize that you had a problem? Well, you know, like I said, my body was breaking down physically. Um, I got scared, you know, fear, anxiety. Um, resentments, which is all a part of recovery, um, and all this stuff just built up. And um, you know, like I said, the three words you need to say is, "I need help. I'm done." And um, unfortunately, when I was, you know, off to Statesboro, I got in a one-car accident on the way there. Um, I was using, uh, I was drinking, and um, I got lost. Um, trying to find the place. I was on MapQuest driving down some back roads and, you know, it was a blessing looking, you know, looking back on it, you know, today because um, they say, you know, entering a program of recovery, you have to hit a rock bottom. And that was my rock bottom. Um, my sponsor tells me it was a medium bottom, but it was low enough for me. Um, so I got in a one car accident, totaled the car. Um, you know, it could have killed me could have hurt someone else but um, the good Lord was with me that day and pulled me out of the truck and uh, some folks got me an ambulance and uh, I went to the ER and um, that's where I called my wife and a friend and I was an hour away from from the place I was going so you were actually on the way to rehab I was on the way to rehab so imagine that what a great story 
<laughs> not many people can say. I was on the way to rehab and I got a, a you know, I got in a wreck and um, I was in the ER close to uh, Statesboro, Georgia, where Willing Way is. And that's where I was going for recovery because I knew I needed a medical detox. Uh, medical detox, I was scared, you know, of the seizures that could happen. Um, you know, I thought I had AFib. <laughs> There's no telling where I thought I had at the time. But anyway, when I got in there uh, in the ER, you know, the, the cop, the highway patrolman came in and kind of said, where were you going? And I told him I was going to rehab. And um, he said they had been trying to find me for a while. And um, I think if I wouldn't have told him that, you know, I would have been locked up and, you know, possibly not survive but because I did need a medical detox. I needed doctors and supervision. Um, so anyway, um, and that sort of magically disappeared later on. When I got into the detox center, you know, if you want to talk about that, I, I can certainly share. Yeah. Um, it's brutal. Um, when I talked about the combo of an anxiety med and alcohol. Um, so that was your? Yes. Uh, what, what was the it, it was Xanax uh, a benzo is the class there's there's a lot of meds involved they use that also for um, for detox without alcohol because it's, it's an instant uh, anxiety med so anyway so a lot of you know a lot of physicians not trying to say anything bad about physicians but don't know the exact effect of the combo not that they're required to say you know here's the effects of what's going to happen to alcohol and benzos but when you go to recovery these folks are have already been there you know a lot of people are are doing their community work you know in recovery so they've been there and i was told when i was there you know the detox from a from a benzo or xanax and alcohol is brutal um and you know i didn't know when i was taking it that was the fact i didn't really abuse the benzo i took you know exactly what was prescribed but the combination of those you know xanax can get into your body it can get into your fatty cells and it takes time it takes a lot of time for that to get out um, and they told me that in recovery you, know, you feel like <laughs> i got in the wreck and went you know I, I got all the detox meds going shots in my back and all this stuff and um I felt like I got hit by it. <laughs> I got in the wreck and I thought it was the wreck that was causing my headaches and uh, it was the it was the detox from the benzos. Uh, extreme bad headaches. Um, I think I was very close to a wet brain. Um, and I know everybody doesn't know what wet brain if you want to look it up. It's where you know your body completely shuts down and you can possibly go into a coma. Um, because like when I was in rehab, they called me Rain Man <laughs> because we'd start playing cards and all of a sudden I'd be on fire, you know, talking and then all of a sudden the headache, you know, and that's part of the detox problem that was so hard and that's why I needed, you know, medical help to, to monitor my, you know, blood pressure and heart rate and all this stuff and, and anyway. So um, another part of the experience is I started having allergic reactions to the uh, detox meds, so they had to get me off of these. And I was in a holistic place um, where they were trying to get you off all the meds. And uh, let's see, I slept for probably five days. I was on and off. You know, the sleeping was abnormal. Um, so the physical pain you were in, you were thinking at the time, had to do with the accident. And the truth is, a lot of it, the headaches, was actually you going through the pains of the medicine and uh, uh, of the detox. Yeah. Yeah. That's detox. powerful. So that that's where you gotta talk about, you know, you can't get the spiritual part until you get better physically. You know, when I got back, you know, I was in there seventeen days. So say that again. So in order to get the spiritual part of recovery, you got to get better, at least for me. I can tell my story, I can't tell someone else's uh, the physical part, you got to get better. You got to get better mentally, and the spiritual part usually comes later. I mean, at the time, I'm mm -hmm. on my knees every morning praying, and all these emotions come out and just praying. I thought I was going to die. I really thought I was going to die before I went as well. Um, I ended up in the ER a couple of times, racing heart rate. Thought I was having a heart attack, but it was all the anxiety, you know, and the meds and the combo of the alcohol. So, how long? 
prior to going to rehab had you been an addict? Well, um, I would say I've been drinking for a long time, most, you know, 25 years or so. But You even had your own bar, correct? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the physical part didn't happen until later, and unfortunately, a lot of people wait too late. Um, yeah, I did. Oh, I thought you were talking about it at my house. <laughs> 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 but, but yeah, anyway, uh, that's besides the point. But um, So physically, I was beat down. Uh, I was there for 17 days. And um, you know, like I said, this place was getting me off all the meds. And I was feeling okay, but something just wasn't clicking. I got scared, and I, and I thought I needed to go back home and see my... Um, you know, see my family practice guy because I thought, you know, five to seven days they say you're detoxed. So let's ask you one more question about your family. Okay. How was your family dealing with this in your life? How were how was Amy and, and your children? How 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 were they handling all this? Um, well, Amy's a godsend. Obviously, she came to pick me up. Um, you know, once you get in the program of recovery, uh, obviously they're very hurt, um, and and you gotta you gotta make amends with these people. One of my favorite slogans in recovery is is uh, clean house. You know, you gotta clean up. You gotta clean up a lot of things. You know, some people end up in wrecks like me. Some people end up in prison. Some people lose their jobs. So I like to look at positive things that happen. You know. Didn't die in the wreck. I came home to a wife. I still had my kids. My relationship is better with all three today. My relationship with God is strong. My faith is strong. Um, so when we got home, I had to go to my family practice doctor. And I was out of work for 90 days. I was on the work plan. Um, and I still couldn't drive when I got home. I mean, that's 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 the part that was just amazing. Me. Being a research person, I'm like, well, what is going on? And I finally went to my family practice. Doctor. Because of your nerves? Because of what, what was the I deal? I just wasn't feeling good. I mean, when you're talking physically sick, I couldn't walk 50 yards, you know, out of my driveway and back without the dizziness. So there's no way you can get spiritually strong. <laughs> I see. And you're not physically and mentally strong. So anyway, I fought it, you know, all this stuff, and I finally went to my family practice guy, and luckily his brother was in recovery years ago, and he assured me that this was all part of the process. And so I've known my family practice doctor for, oh God, 35 years. Um, so, uh, and I'll tell you a good part of the story was speaking of how strong recovery is I reached out to someone that went to Willing Way I've never met them in person and they went through the same process I did and uh, I called this guy 60 days prior and he called me every day probably for 90 days after I got out of recovery and I've never seen this person you know live still haven't met him still haven't met him we've talked wow. on the phone uh, and that's the power of of helping people. You know, if there's anything I can look at today, uh, trust God, clean house, help people. It's one of my favorite sayings. Um, but anyway, got through the workout part uh, of the 90 days, went back to work, uh, continued to work a strong recovery program. Um, So what does that look like now? What's the accountability part of your recovery? What does that look like? Well, it's working with a mentor. Um, always helping people. I can't talk about the, there's an anonymity to the program uh, that I can't really talk about. Uh, but certainly, I, if someone reached out to me that's having a problem with addiction, I could certainly you know, take them through the program. Uh, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. You asked about a verse, um, one of the questions, the serenity prayer. It's a program of accepting, you know, accepting the things we cannot change, courage to change the things we can, the wisdom to know the difference. Uh, you know, acceptance can be used for everybody. I mean, you got to accept the election. You got to accept 
uh, that bird flying right there. You know, you gotta accept that I'm here today. You know, only thing we can do control is what's in front of us. Um, so anyway, I'm working a strong program. I got a mentor uh, who's been through the same thing. Um, we share a lot of experiences. That's the importance of recovery. Um, the recovery centers are only there to help. You know, these people have been through it. I saw a lot of things. You know, a lot of things are, are getting clear now. I notice you're taking the camera to the bird. <laughs> oh, just a beautiful bird. He came right around, just said hi to you. So anyway, I'm grateful. You know, another two important parts of the program of gratitude, uh, humble, staying humble. You know, I had enough humility. Anybody in the program's had enough humility. When you share your story, your uh, courage, strength, and hope. There is hope, Dave. Good. So you said trust God. Clean house and help people. When clean house, you know, that's not doing a to-do list, honey-do list. That's cleaning up your act, um, making amends with a lot of people you may have hurt, um, which can happen with people not in recovery. You know, if something's on your mind, it can cause a resentment. Resentment kills. Um, until you let it out and until you make amends with a lot of things and clean up a lot of things, you know, miracles start happening when you, when you stay in the program. The DUI uh, sort of magically disappeared. Um, I was in some bad situations that I'm not going to share here, but they, they worked themselves out. Um, you know, and like you were talking about earlier, my relationship with my wife, and, uh, you know, they're in recovery. They're in recovery as well. My daughters are doing great. You know, for them to tell me they're proud of me. You know, the letters they wrote to me after one year uh, was incredible. Um, I've got one daughter, uh, junior in high school, and she's doing great. Um, and my one daughter's in college. And I talked to them about the program, made amends, and uh, if anything, they're very proud. So. You know, you're not doing it for your kids. You're not doing it for your, for your wife. I got to do it for me. And that's one thing a lot of people go into recovery going, I got to, you know, do it for my kids. You got to do it for you. Mm. You got to recognize the problem. Clean I love your honesty, Richard. Yeah, you got a clean house. Um, I love that saying. You know, you can pressure wash your house. <laughs> you can, you can, you can find a lot of things in your house. Uh, Clean it up. Clean up your act. So. Mm. Anyway. so, I'm just so grateful that you're sharing honestly with us all this. And what's next for Richard? Where, what, when you're in recovery, I know every day is a commitment. But how is this helping you towards the future? You, know, you have to work a strong program and continue to work a program. Um, you know, people that, that don't continue working the program, they talk about relapse, which scares me to death. Um, with, with everything that's going on in the world mm -hmm. right now, if you look at the stats, 30% uh, of the people in the program are relapsing. Um, you know, number one, we, it's, a hard, it's hard to do meetings right now in recovery meetings due to the COVID, uh, but we're, you know, having some some private things right now, um, meeting with um, people in the program one on one. But you know, you got to keep working the program. You know, a relapse can happen. You mentioned the urges. I knock on wood, I really hadn't had, you know, too many urges. Uh, I think it was due to the fact that my detox was so bad, you know, and sharing this story helps, you know, it helps me realize that I can't, <laughs> I, I can't drink again because it can, it can, nothing good will really come about it, you know, so, um, anyway. Will you read the good news for us today from Philippians 4, 6 through 7? I think it, it, it just lines up perfectly with your serenity prayer. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. 
be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all the understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You mentioned something that I think a lot of us can relate to, Richard, and that is anxiety. Anxiety. Yeah, man. None today. Yeah, I mean, we can all relate to that. At some point during the day or during our week, we have, um, there, there's fear, right? Fear, anxiety for me. Um, sure was a lot of anxiety uh, going on. And so you were trying to medicate yourself for this, right? Yeah, sure. And works for about an hour. <laughs> wow, wow, man. You know, and, and really, uh, you know, it makes the next day worse. You know, the anxiety gets worse. Mm -hmm. um, and through the program of recovery, anxiety slowly but surely goes away. Sometimes slowly, sometimes quickly. Um, for me, it took a long time. So the last question I have for you has to do with if there's someone out there that sees this and hears your story, what would you tell them that might help them choose sobriety or choose recovery? What would you tell them if they're dealing with um, nerves, being, being anxious? What would your uh, advice be? I need help. That's the three words I love to hear from somebody. I can't help, I can't help anyone unless they want to help themselves. Um, that's one of the hardest parts, you know, now for me is, you know, someone comes to me and, and then they hand around. I did the same thing, you know, until I talked to that, that guy that I've never met in person, um, cause I felt more comfortable talking to him. Um, I was, I was uncomfortable, but, uh, you know, you gotta say, I need help and there's help out there. And certainly anyone can contact me, uh, if you're struggling today. Um, anytime. Uh, that's what helps me stay in recovery is helping people. You know, because Dave, we, we're so self-centered. Um, helping people gets my mind off of myself. You know, and to see people in recovery, that's what keeps me going today. One day at a time. Mm. Well, thank you for sharing our sto your story, Richard. We're so uh, humbled by your kindness to do so. We're going to sign out. All right. And, Lord, we thank you for Richard sharing this openly with us today, and we're grateful for him. We pray for everybody that's listening, Lord, that if you um, might help them know that they're loved. And the three things you said, say them one more time, Richard that the, the, not, not, the, not the mental, the physical, and the spiritual, but the three things you said about helping others, about trusting God. Trust God, clean house, and help people. Today. I love you. We love you, Richard. We thank, All right. We thank you, man. Have, have an amazing day. God bless you. God keep you. God help you make the right choices today, his choices.